That's the alert that we're live, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so Johnny was serious. Johnny was serious. He was going to hit the button and split. That was it, huh? Yeah. Steve, hit it. <laughs> oh, hey, everybody. This is uh, a special event Sunday. Uh, what's the date today, boys? We got uh, March 25th, 2018. It's uh, 606 Pacific, 906 Eastern. In the house, we've got Dave Nesdal. Everybody dance. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, from South Carolina, we've got Jay Hannon in the house. Get crazy. <laughs> we got 1851.50s here tonight so far. Right. And That's counting. Pretty- 20? That's pretty good. That's pretty good considering they uh, don't expect us to be here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, from uh, Santa Cruz, uh, California, Johnny Bean. We don't know if he's in here right now or not. He's in my A. Hey, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I mean, I'm not, but I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this place is a, a disaster. So you know? basically, We're- just like normal with Johnny. He's not, but he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we're cleaning. We we I I dis- disassembled the ladder to the loft. Yeah, I told you guys <laughs> the ladder had broke, you know, a couple months ago. So we took that apart and I've got a regular ladder sitting here. And uh just cleaning. Cleaning the place up. But I'm here. I'm watching. Right. So everybody, I sent a couple of gifts out, one for Dave, one for Jay. Hey Dave, is there any kind of demo you want to do of what uh, you I sent you? Sure. Yeah, let's see her. It. And no, it's not a hot plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little it's a little coaster, a Star Trek coaster. Yes. And when you sit when you sit your your drink or whatever on it. Oh, why don't I turn it on? I think it is. It is a transporter. Come on. Hang on. Defective. Steve Steve sent him a broken yeah. one. No, oh, no, no. You're gonna get transported. <laughs> it makes the exact the right sounds. There's two different sounds that it makes. And watch, I'm I'm gonna make this bottle disappear. Hang on. See? Oh, it's disappeared. <laughs> so so what it was is he has another one in his bedroom. So that bottle of lube went from his computer just now into the bedroom. <laughs> it's not lube. This is eyeglass cleaner. Eyeglass cleaner. <laughs> it's yeah. the guys that it's the guys that don't get it much that talk about it so much. <laughs> oh man, Jay, that means if if what what you drew on there, that means it, it would vanish. <laughs> Dave, Dave got the transporter. I got the lube. That's what Steve sent. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So no, we, I know I know Dave's a big fan of uh, Star Trek. So if I see anything that looks pretty cool, uh, and I know he likes things that have sound effects, so I couldn't resist. Had to be done. Send thank it you, off. Steve. It was yeah, an awesome yeah. gift. And plus, I know the time frame now. If I send something on a Saturday, you guys pretty much – I think you got it yesterday, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's a week. It takes a week to get there, so I know that. And, Jay, you just got yours today, right? Yeah, Sunday delivery. Can you believe it? Awesome. Yep. Sunday delivery? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven days a week. They have nothing better so, to do in your town. No, they don't. <laughs> but Dave, it has it has a light um that comes out of it. Like the No, bottom. not the yes. This there the there's a light on the bottom. Oh. Okay. And it's gone. That's cool. Yeah, and it's really cool. You just vapor, vaporize the audience. Yeah. Where's Coombs? <laughs> the Clayton James says, Jay, tomorrow is Metallica Monday. It is. You're right. Metallica Monday. Metallica. <laughs> so All right. I, did I open mine? Yeah, open yours. Because... Okay. Thirteen people liked my gift. One person didn't. <laughs> That's pretty good numbers. Mm-hmm. You can vaporize <laughs> that, that thumbs down. Yeah. Here's mines. Mines. I'm gonna find a, a seam on here to to rip it. All right. I'm 
how it's look as I open. And whenever whenever you guys get something from me, don't be fooled by like the box, what it says on the box. You got to get inside the box. Oh, good. We try to get in the box whenever we can. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where the heck is my? Oh, so that's not a, uh, a Celestian speaker in there? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Am I going to ruin anything if I cut too deep? Yes. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. You know what song I have in my head right now? Uh, mine All Mine. Nope. Sweet Hitchhiker. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> Sammy. Sweet Angle angle is down or something. Into the crotchetaria. All right. Shall I leave the, read the note first? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I always send a note. Oh, to Jay. Thanks for being my late show rum buddy. Enjoy, Steve. <laughs> That's cool, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, wow. Very cool. That is the very first issue of the Inside Magazine, probably, what, Spring 95, somewhere around there? This is the first issue? Premier That's issue? the first issue, man. Oh, wow, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll yeah. get a kick out of that. Issue yeah, there's a, right, Spring 95. Yeah, there you go. It's in and, great shape. Uh, it is. Oh, yeah. You know, Pages aren't sticking together or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. We'll be later on tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's uh, from our buddy Jeff Hausman, who runs the Van Halen news desk, the Van Halen store. That's what he uh, he graduated to from Eruption Video. He used to run out of Rolling Stone magazine, and uh, so that's what he did next. Was the Inside magazine? There's a good. Does he still uh, have those? Does he still have them? No, no. There were 16 issues, and then uh, then he went off to just sell the merchandise out of his house. Yeah, there's a good centerfold in that one, Jay. You talking about this one? With the yeah, the Cobble Wobble. Yeah, and Eddie's red, got this good, good shot of the red Ernie ball. Yeah. yeah. He's got two cigarettes in it. Yeah. So that would be the last time Van Halen played the Cobble Wobble. They only played twice. So that photo's from 1992. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, you, you guys know me. I go down there for the birthday bash pretty almost every year. But, uh, yeah, always thought Van Halen would show up one day. But uh, – I wish they'd get along to make it happen, but uh, yeah, that was the last time all those years ago. <laughs> Before I start digging into this box a little deeper, on the back wall here, yeah, there's a surfboard. Is that still there? Yes. That's awesome. But if you look at photos of the club now, Jay, there's way more paraphernalia up there. Like back then, there was just the Cabo Wabo sign behind Alex there and the surfboard. And that was kind of it. <laughs> it was pretty simple back then, the first couple of years of it. But then, uh, yeah, Sammy just changed it up as the years went on to make it more entertaining. Then they had pool tables in there around probably 1995. Then uh, a couple of years after that, there's a basketball hoop uh, mm -hmm. as you walk in on the left-hand side. So things changed over the years. They don't have the basketball hoop or the pool tables anymore because uh, he still fills the place. Well, it's birthday bash week or New Year's, uh, Sanco de Mayo. Uh, yeah, they fill the place still. Look at this little thing about it's got Eddie with that. I mean that his guitar right there looks uh, pretty new. <laughs> well, that's that that's not the original one. That's the oh. one from '93. Oh, inside look at the EVH Music Man. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, this there's a second to last page there. I got the information from Jeff. Um, if you look at uh, the second to last page, Jay. Mm -hmm. There, the Sunday afternoon in Jurassic Park. So <laughs> that video never was released, but it was actually for the song Unchained. Uh, that's a bit of an inside, well, <laughs> ironically the inside, but see, that's the inside scoop on that video that was never released. It was for the song Unchained, but mm -hmm. they never released it. With the dinosaur in that bottle photo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I was trying to think of it myself. 
like years ago. I was like, wow, fair warning album. I mean, that's the clothing that they're wearing. But what song would that be that has to do with dinosaurs? So I guess it's sort of unchain the dinosaur, I guess. And, and it never leaked? No. The video never leaked? No. No. Wow. And there's Sammy with his uh, OU812 Kramer. Well, that uh, Guy Fieri has now, right? Yep. Yep. And we just watched a Guy Fieri show. Ironic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there's more in here? Oh, yeah. What are you kidding me? It's a huge box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Steve, you son of you, you butt of a sitch. What did I get? Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny, man. He busted oh. open. All oh, the tiki mugs. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, now, yeah, man. Now we, uh, now you can, we can hook up. Now I, ha I had, yeah, I'll, I'll be using these on the show. <laughs> I know. I was sick and tired of those plastic cups you're drinking out of. If you're having a rum in something, you got to have a tiki mug. Oh, that's man. cool. That's funny, man. Oh, and they have a. Uh... And they have a dad. Uh... <laughs> hasn't even opened them yet <laughs> yeah just loaded just by looking at them so steve i don't know if you saw this but they wrote whoever you ordered these from there's a note on it for you right on you want me to read it to you yeah go ahead it was from <laughs> Come on, let me fix my cam here it's from somebody aaron should i read it in aaron's voice <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for your purchase of these <laughs> swanky big mouth tiki mugs and coasters. It is truly appreciated. I am sure your guests will love umbrella drinks <laughs> in these fun. What the heck is she? her handwriting is weird. I didn't know it's her. <laughs> yeah. E R I N. It better be. Uh, uh, no, Aaron Canada. My buddy, my buddy uh, Richie, his son's name is Aaron. It's not double A? No, that's Aaron. That's my middle name. Double A? Yeah. A double MCO. for you wrestling fans? Double A, MCO. Well, Dave uh, was uh, named after like Elvis Presley, right? Elvis yeah. Aaron Presley? That's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, I didn't even know that. Now I have to. Uh, Caleb says that's super creepy. <laughs> I can't wait till the Friday show. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Start, start now. <laughs> yeah, I, I oh, drank yeah. a lot last night. I can't, I can't do two nights in a row. No, no. If you start now, maybe Friday you'll actually be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys didn't go on at, at quarter after one, what else is in the box there, Jay? This one? No, no, the other one. Oh, there's what? There's more in there? <coughs> Jeez, man. And it's not even my birthday. Well, that's what we do here. We send random gifts to keep everybody happy all year. <laughs> oh, there is more. <laughs> but wait. There's yeah. more. Oh, that's okay. Tiki coasters. <laughs> there it is. Wow. <laughs> okay, I, I thought when she mentioned them, I thought maybe they were in the box of them or something. But that's, that's Oh, no. Yeah. I got a special spot right here for him. There you go. Cool, man. Should I read that in Aaron's voice too? No, I'm joking. <laughs> and and the handwriting too, you could tell it's a girl. Really? Yeah. Look, look at that. I mean, come on, man. You know? <laughs> Neat. Well, Steve, thank you very much, dude. This is really yeah, yeah. cool. I really Actually, the whole, the whole Elvis Presley thing, just uh, I got to show Dave a photo that I have, and I got a story to tell. Hold on. Okay. A.A. <laughs> a. Ron. That's <laughs> yeah, that's right. A.A. A. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve, you got to come out with your own custom uh, Rummeister glasses, dry, dry heat 480 Rummeister yeah. glasses. Yeah, I'll sort something out. So uh, I don't know if, if you guys can make this uh, picture out. Can you see this picture here? Yes, it's, it looks like uh, Elvis's face. Okay, guys. So this photo, true story, 
before I was even born. I was born in 71, but my parents were in Hawaii, 1967, walking from their hotel room. And I'd say like a field that goes uphill to like a luau or whatever. People are hanging out. And uh, so they walk along and I guess they're sort of uh, like concrete sort of square uh, blocks to sort of walk up to the luau. And anyway, this guy's walking down and my mom says to my dad, hey, is that Elvis Presley? And my dad goes, yeah, I think so. So Elvis walks right beside my dad, like passing each other. And my dad says, howdy. And, and, and Elvis says, howdy. And my mom grabs a camera that took this photo. So it, it's sort of half color, half black and white, the way it sort of developed, like the sort of a side profile of his face. And you know how nuts people are down uh, in Graceland and stuff, right? I mean, this is a photo that like nobody down there is, or anyone else has seen except sort of me and family members, right? Yeah. So uh, who knows, right? Who would value something like that? I know there's just people that are crazy about Elvis stuff, right? But yeah. Well, you have a one in a, that's, that's a, yeah. you know, that's the only, only picture. Well, I mean, that's, that's as crazy to an Elvis fan as say the 5150 guitar photo. Yeah picture that yeah. no one hasn't has seen yet like yeah, you know, yeah. The latest photos of that guitar or whatever from, yeah, yeah you know that's like you know oh my god i'm a little child again <laughs> <laughs> anyway i haven't i haven't gone on ebay and searched yet like what an elvis rare photo would be worth but uh it's a i thought it was pretty interesting anyway <laughs> i'm gonna i want to bust one of these open jamie yeah. says that's awesome Yes. <laughs> yeah, what the, Elvis. What the, really? Yeah. Huh. Her favorite song, one of her favorite songs ever, is the live version of uh, One um, Night With You? No, the one where he starts cracking up. Oh. He can't, he can't stop laughing. Uh, Jeannie, what's the song in the, in the chat, please? Teddy and, Bear? <laughs> Um, what the heck is it called? But if you go on YouTube and type it in, and it's it it is really funny. He just loses it in the middle of the song and can't stop laughing. <laughs> it's really is that good. the one where is that the one where he's wearing like an all leather suit and it's kind of like a square stage? In well, the it's, middle? I've only heard the audio. I don't know if there's if oh. there's video to it or not. But um, yeah. if you're lonely, lonely tonight or something tonight. If you're lonesome yes, tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he yeah. loses. It's really funny. <laughs> is it quite? Is it possible that Dave might have played that song live with his uh, wedding band <laughs> at some point? No. Mm. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Are you lonesome tonight? Cool. How could three people not like? this this show i mean we're bringing it to you on an off night and and it was a, a gift opening and there's oh. there's like gifts <laughs> what's They're wrong with you people? That they have no gifts. my god yes, don't right. watch the damn show if you're gonna turn it on <laughs> say who you are in the chat yeah and, uh, and steve will send you something <laughs> yeah right <laughs> So, uh, so Dave, just uh, mentioned to everybody in the chat, you did some uh, work on your uh, fret edges this weekend. Yes. Uh, right here. There it is. Nail what file. Guitar? Huh? What guitar? It's a, it's a file. I did a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah well, on Friday, a Dave. Uh, a lot of my guitars had some fret sprouting. So I went yeah. and bought some two of these and uh, took the sprouting off. So Dave, just just like sort of, uh, I guess temperature wise in your area, you're talking about wood ex like necks expanding or contracting. Would they not necks like contract? And then of course the metal doesn't. So yeah, uh, that's what happens. And it happens when there's not enough humidity in the air. You need yeah. so guitars need humidity. Yeah. So is there a scenario where a neck would sort of narrow and then like months later when the weather changes, all of a sudden it kind of widens out again? Have you yeah. ever noticed? Yeah, that? absolutely. It does. Yeah. Sure. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and after a while it won't do it anymore. Like you know, I have guitars in here that, that have stabilized, you know, through winter and summer and winter and summer and winter and summer, and they just don't move. Wow. 
but some of them do. It just depends on how green the wood is. Right. And that uh, purple tape guitar you mentioned, uh, Dave, does that one, it has the gold uh, crown heads on it, that one? It doesn't have gold crown heads. It has gold godos. They're newer. They're yeah. newer godos because uh, crown heads are like $350 for a set. And I, I have a set on that guitar up there. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, that one in the corner. That's the Kramer Frankie ad. Yeah. Kramer ad Frankie. Uh, and it has the minute that it has that on it. Cause yeah. you know, I had to have them for that guitar, but yeah, no, no. Cause I, I thought the I people, just couldn't uh, see, I just couldn't see spending that much money on a set of tuners again for a guitar that I'm going to, it's just not really, it's just there for the collection. It's not really going to get any playing time. Yeah. But uh, what I was getting at, Dave, was I guess originally that purple. Uh, yes. Yes. Had yes it, had it, was, it was an 81 guitar. So it had the, uh, it had the crown tuners on. Yeah. Right. right. Huh. So there was just a, basically a couple of his guitars uh, originally that had those uh, crown heads on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, actually, whatever guitars he, what actually, whatever guitars he <laughs> built around eighty and eighty one, probably would have had them on there. You know, if they weren't shallow, they would have been the crown head godos. Right. <laughs> Is there any uh, questions in the chat, guys? You see, right. He, he he says, "Hey, Dave, does it happen to?" Uh, does it happen more to the guitars on the wall opposed to the guitars in the rack? Uh, no, the reason it happens to uh, to to both because the front door is right over there, and the minute you open that front door, the uh, the air comes in and it's all dry air. So whether the, the guitars are on the wall over there or on that particular rack near the door, that's where it happens. Uh, but my room here, this room is pretty dry. It, it, it's uh, it's and it's hard to keep hydrated, um, even with a big uh, humidifier. It's not. It's just not enough. It just. It's too much work. Hmm. I'm reading the. Uh... And Sully, dude, now. Uh, he says, if you file the sprouted edges, won't they be a bit short when they swell up again? No, because it's uh, I, I take such a small portion off that it's uh, it it's just the it's just the very the tang of it that sticks out of the side of the wood, not the actual fret itself, but the tang. So, what would so you have to use? Sorry, go ahead. Well, you're you're still on this. I was just going to ask, what would you have to use to uh, with stainless steel frets? Well, it's very tough to do with stainless steel. First of all, they shouldn't really move. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it should be more stable. Stainless steel fret uh, it, in the wood should keep that wood from contracting pretty good. But if you uh, if it if you have to do it to a stainless steel fret, you have to use a diamond file. Because stainless steel frets are so uh, hard. hard that it would break this file. <laughs> it would actually break this file. Yep. So, so Dave, what, what, that file, Dave, what's the title of that? Is it just like a metal file? It's just a six-inch metal file, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my, uh, I mentioned the other night my red uh, EVH uh, with the black and white stripe uh, mm -hmm. guitar. That's, that's the... I guess I'd say the only one I've ever had <laughs> out of like 20 something guitars that, I mean, automatically out of the box, I was going, Oh my God, I'm like, I could cut my hand open almost so yeah. that, uh, I guess at the time of the year you mentioned whether it was built in the winter, uh, I guess those are coming from Mexico, the EVH brand stripe series, and then coming up here, maybe it got here at a different time of year and yeah, uh, the, the wood shrunk or something, but man, it was, it was so sharp. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So that's, uh, that's something that uh, I could actually well, that's, do that one. That's one of the reasons why the specials, the uh, the Wolfgang specials and anything made in Mexico, uh, most of the time you get people complaining that the fret sprouting is so horrible on those guitars normally. Well, yeah, they're coming from a, a very humid area 
and usually going right into a dry area. So yeah. that's why those are, that's why they, they, you know, they do the fret sprouting. Right. Well, so you have, uh, you had heard of other people complaining about that. Oh yeah. And it's not, you know, I mean, even me, I complain about it. Uh, I've had a bunch of EVH stripe series guitars, uh, that had the problem. I've had some Charvel, you know, some made in Mexico Charvels that ha it's everything that comes out of like a really humid area, you know, the made the the stuff made in Mexico especially. Right. Hmm. Jay, Jay, have you ever had problems with frets uh fret problems on the edges? The Mexican neck on this striped guitar. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And the American the USA neck is bad. The stainless steel ones. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I would imagine that that room you're in is really dry. Um, and I live in South Carolina, so it's not that dry, you know. And what's the status of your EVH uh, signature series guitar, Jay, the black one? The replacement. That they told me it's not going to another month. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, they added and, a month to it. And that was a month ago they said that? <laughs> no, this I've, initially was supposed to be uh, the end of March, and then I emailed, uh, what, what day was it? Wednesday or Thursday of this past week, and they just oh, said, okay. uh, you're looking at another month. So, whatever. Shaft Daddy says, hi, what's your opinions on Wolfgang standards, please? I think they're great, great guitars for the money. There, you know, if I was to get them, I would, I would make a couple changes. I have made a couple changes. I have one, uh, and I've made a couple changes. But alone, you know, just by itself, for the money that you spend on that guitar, pound for pound, it's a great guitar. Pound cake for pound cake, it's a great guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so what is the uh, price range? I saw that uh, the new Zilla guitar, you can get that for like under $1,000. I would hope so. Yeah. yeah it should be $600. Mm -hmm. $600. Yeah. yeah. That's an unbelievable price, yeah. So that that's I guess that's like uh, the sort of lowest price of any of the EVH Wolfgang stuff would be that that line of uh, the yes. Wolfgang. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Shaft Daddy, with what changes did I make? I... I put a, a real Floyd Rose on it because the uh, the Floyd that comes on that guitar is pot metal. It's junk. <laughs> and which which model of Floyd do you put on, Dave? Exactly, is it like an original? It's I just put an original one on. Yeah, I didn't put an eighty four. Oh, just okay. Put an original. Yeah, yeah. This one here. So this was the first modification I did. This is the eighty four on here that you guys recommended. So this was the first guitar I put one on and yeah, immediately I was like, I started changing out all my other ones too. With it. So, yeah. <laughs> wasn't just you, Jay. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for Dave, I, I wouldn't have done it. I mean, I was uh, questioning. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, that's, 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 it, that's, an, that's an echo here, man. Like all the things you we've learned the last year or so watching this, it's, uh, it's changed the, it's changed the game. And even me now I'm like, uh, retiring guitars I play live because uh, in a, me also in a month I've got the the music craft uh, pacer body coming with the Charvel neck uh, to do sort of my own uh, personal build uh, so yeah cool all because of all because of the guys here <laughs> very cool uh, Michael Smith says uh, Jack White's EVH is badass uh, Michael Smith you gotta watch uh, there's a song called Over and Over. It's Jack White's new video, and there's three Wolfgangs on it. There's that that uh, Wolfgang custom three pickup that he has. There's an all blue Wolfgang and an all white Wolfgang with pinstripes on it in that video, and all three are killer looking. And they're all customs. They're all uh, real Wolfgangs made for Jack White. 
Oh, so they're sort of custom made for him, maybe you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that could be even a Chip Ellis type thing, perhaps, maybe. Well, someone someone made them for him at EBH, yeah. 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 I would imagine that it that those guitars needed to have Eddie's uh, okay to make, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I guess that, that's another – oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Mr. BHB. Bruce Who, is that? Who is that, Bruce? <laughs> yeah, that's Bruce. <laughs> Belated yeah, birthday. Says, yeah. Wait, so what Floyd Rose comes on a Wolfgang special, Dave? It's an F1000. It's the Korean-made Floyd Rose, which is a good Floyd. It's it's still not an original uh, or an 84 reissue, but it's much better than the, the one that comes on the standard. Uh, so, I mean, the, 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 the Floyds that come on the specials, I would, I would keep on the specials. I wouldn't change those. But the ones that come on the standards, I would probably change. I would, I would, I would definitely change. You, you know, that's, uh, that's what I would definitely do. And Dave, you've always mentioned that you have a really good deal with uh, Floyd Rose. I guess they're out in your area. Are they in New Jersey? I think it is. They're, they are in New Jersey, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have a relationship with them, so. Right. It's a little easier for me than most, but anyone can order from them direct. Yeah, I have. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell them I know David Nesdal. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I don't. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't want to say that, because then I'll say, who's that? <laughs> all right all of a sudden 57 people are calling yeah i know dave nesdall i know dave nesdall yeah. you can say you know me if you're gonna buy about a hundred of them yeah then it doesn't matter but if you're just buying one they don't care no <laughs> oh jay i was gonna ask you a question i didn't get i actually asked on facebook i didn't get an answer but uh, there was a drink that came to the table when we went for dinner on Friday that Jeannie held up. It had some kind of smoke coming out of it. Remember what that was? You know what? The guy brought it over. Yeah. And I thought it was a drink. Yeah, so did I when I saw it. It wasn't. Sure. It was like a, it was like a decoration. Like, oh, hey, check this out while you know while you Hope look so. at the menu and pick your drinks. So oh. it, was, it was a flask or a um, I forget what they're called. I failed science class. Um, what are the what are those little the beaker? It was a little yeah, tiny yeah. beaker. Me, yeah. me. And it isn't, had a beaker red on liquid. Little... But then there was this little thing they put in it, and it was smoking like crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't beaker like from the Muppets? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guy with the skinny, uh, tall head, sort of. Yeah. Me, 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 me. No, it wasn't a candle. It was literally <laughs> something, you know, it was cool. Dry ice. Genius. Was yeah. it really? It was dry ice in there? That's what it looked like. Was I there? <laughs> it looked like a, like a little piece of plastic that they dumped in there. I thought, <laughs> I don't know, man. Speaking of the Muppets, they should bring something like that back <laughs> onto TV. Get, t get to regular TV fun again. Yeah. <laughs> I canceled regular TV a long time ago. Yeah. Well, because Netflix is so much cheaper, right? I think guys around here that I know that have it, it's like $8 a month or something. <laughs> Whereas the regular cable around here, it's like, you know, $80 for, you know, 40 channels or something. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the cable company's having a hard time because everybody keeps canceling to get Netflix. That used to be eight bucks, I think. Now it's, I think, uh, what, eleven ninety nine or twelve ninety nine if you want the, um, the 4K. Oh yeah, version or something. Yeah. But I actually, me guys, I I just watch YouTube all the time. Mm -hmm. Call whatever I want. And it's there's going to be something there. Yeah. Well, Scott Nickerson says this is his regular TV now. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get syndicated, guys. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey Dave, when you play guitar there, where you're sitting, what's your setup like? Uh, guitar path. To the amp, uh, what do you play into at your desk there? It's behind me. Oh, okay. The amp is behind me. It's uh, an EVH head and a 100-watt plexi-style head with three cabs. 
Oh wow! So it's it's a wet dry wet system. Right. Uh, well, my so uh, with my um, uh, my harmonist, uh, it goes mono from my harmonist into stereo into a, an even tied uh, wow. H nine, and then into a uh, TC Electronics flashback times four delay. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. Jeez, Yannick. <laughs> yeah. All right, so man. From, from that, from from that delay, it goes one side goes into the input of the of the main amp. Yep. And uh, <laughs> the other side goes into the return of the other amp. Oh wow. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I had to think about that for a second. I was like. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, when things have been sitting there for a while, you forget the uh, the path of the setup. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Jay, what was for dinner on Friday? What'd you have when you went out? Oh man, what did I have? <laughs> I'm trying to think where we went. We went man. Two different places. You have not been yourself for like this whole weekend. Better <laughs> yet. I'm Better tired. yet, what, how did Brian's guitar play? Did he bring it with him? <sighs> I pick him <laughs> up. I, I get to the front of the airport, and I'm like, he comes out with his with his uh bag, and I'm like, there's his suitcase. I'm like, where's your guitar? He's like, he goes, dude, I packed it, I put it in the case, and the second I got to the airport, I'm like, I forgot my guitar. I'm like, you idiot. <laughs> so what uh, was the Jay, what was the plan with the guitar? Were you gonna try and set it up or something? Or no, I just he um he bought it. What was it six what? months ago, maybe? What what, what was it? It was a, a 1992 Ibanez Universe. Oh really? He had it shipped to Dave for Dave to look over to make sure that it was uh, you know ship shape on the up and up. And uh, so I told him when you come down here, you know, bring it, and then uh, bring it, bring it, and then. <laughs> The initial plan was to do the the late show Friday, yeah, yeah. but um, I, I mean I wanted to get on there even even when you guys went on late. Yeah, yeah. I was I was he went to he went to sleep at like twelve thirty that night. Yeah, yeah. And it was just yeah, it was I'm I'm still still trying to uh, catch up a little bit. Yeah. What uh, what color was his Ibanez? Same. It's the it's the black with the green, except he still has the original pickups and his uh, his pick guard. Is black and green like a swirl kind of? Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Ken Ken Stowe says, "Who the hell forgets their guitar?" <laughs> I know. And he only had one one bag to bring. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, it could be worse. At least he didn't forget it, like in the street or something, or in the front yard when he was getting to the car. Hmm. So. so, your friend Brian there, Jay? Did you go to school with him, or was he in your band at some point? Or no, he was. Uh, he was a friend of my drummers. He went to school with him. Oh yeah, I met, I met him playing uh, softball like ten years ago. Oh, okay. we've, been, we've been good friends ever since. So, right he's a good dude. Really good guy. What? Uh, where? Where does he live? Connecticut. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. How long of a flight is that for him? He took two. So, oh, really? I don't know, hour and a half, and then another forty-five minutes or something. Then you include the layovers, which I can't stand. So driving wise, what would that be like? Eight or ten hours to drive that? If he took connect, I guess Connecticut to South Carolina. That's probably about thirteen hours. I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Uh, he was just there for a couple nights, Jay, and that was it. He got here Thursday night at ten thirty. I picked him up. Yeah. And then I drove him to the airport at uh two o'clock today in the oh, afternoon. Okay. So it was quick. Yep. Cheeto Taquito <laughs> says, Sweet <laughs> Bob Switch, why is the MXR 5150 overdrive so trebly? I bought it online and, it's, and I, I was kind of disappointed. Any suggesting, suggestions? Yeah, turn the treble down. <laughs> if it's too trebly for you, it's not the right pedal for you because it should, I mean, it's Eddie Van Halen's sound. It sounds like a 5150 amp. So if it's too trebly, try turning the treble down, even if you turn it down all the way. Or maybe your EQ, need, your amp needs to be EQ'd differently for the pedal. 
Mm -hmm. I was going to say, what, what amp is he using? Yeah. Oh, hi, Johnny. Oh, hey. Hey, nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my camera is not even, not even set up. Oh. I'm here, though. I'm listening. Cricket. So, so, Dave, that pedal that guy was talking about, was that the uh, red and black and white striped one? Is that what no, he was talking about? No, the EVH overdrive pedal. Oh, overdrive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The 5150 overdrive. The pedal that you have. Yeah, this guy right oh, here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah, yeah. Show, the, show the controls uh -huh. on there real quick. Show the, show the knobs. Yeah, play Hold through on. it. I got to uh, disconnect. Uh, so on uh, my right <laughs> is the uh, output. Uh, next is bass. Next yeah. is mid. And next is treble. So that's what uh, I guess Dave was talking about with the treble. Yeah, I would. Eat, I would actually <laughs> I keep that. At, I would keep the treble at about eleven o'clock. Yeah, and uh, and next is the gain. Um, and then there's a boost button here. Uh, when it's time to solo, you can hit that and you get a bit more uh, boost to your uh, sound. And uh, yeah, this one just uh, engages or disengages it. Yeah. He's playing a Fender bass breaker. No, I, I, I've never heard of a Fender bass breaker. Is that a bass? Is that a tube amp or is that a, uh, is oh. that a solid state amp? So, Steve, have you done a little A-B yet with the two uh, mini EVA champs? Not yet, Jay. I, I'm, I'm, I got to send my taxes in tomorrow. So I've been doing taxes, like, <laughs> relentlessly because uh, there's – I got to take care of me, my mom, my business, and then my uh, partnership business uh, with the Heritage House I have downtown. So I got four things. I'm just I, – I hate – I don't know about you guys with your accountant or, or what relationship you have with your accountant, but uh, I really hate it when I hand my stuff in and mm -hmm. then he'll email me or phone me. Oh, you forgot this. Or, Cause he's got a spreadsheet on my whole life. Right. But I just hate it when something's forgotten. I mean, you'd think I would know by now, but it's just every year business wise, I have new ventures that always come up and he's always looking, I mean, he's doing his job and, and like accountants, lawyers, you know, they're awesome at what they do for a reason. Right. Uh, just cause they, they, they're taking care of me with, uh, as far as the tax thing goes. Right. So I get it, but uh, I feel embarrassed <laughs> when he, uh, he'll message me. He's going to find something like, I think I'm fine. And then he's going to message me. I'm going to hand it in tomorrow by like Wednesday. Hey, where the hell is this document? Oh, <laughs> and it's going to yep. be right here in my filing cabinet. I just, it, it happens. I think I'm good. And then bang, <laughs> he'll come up with something, but that's, that's good. He's doing his job. Right. Yep. That's why, you know, that's why he gets the bucks from me. <laughs> So Cheetah Tequito says his amp is a tube amp. It's an 18 to 30 watt amp. My suggestion to you is to uh, keep your settings on your amplifier on your clean setting, not an overdrive setting, uh, and keep everything at half, five. You know, keep everything as as uh, neutral as as possible. <clears throat> and then and then when you're using the overdrive pedal, it's going to sound like Van Halen no matter what, because it's a Van Halen sounding pedal. Uh, if you're looking for a Stevie Ray Vaughan type of sound out of that pedal, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not an overdrive pedal. It's more of a distortion than anything. Yeah. So it's going to, it's going to be gritty and it's going to be high gain. Yeah. And what you can do or what I had to do, just what Dave said, it's very much distortion. So for me, the gain, put it on zero and like hit a few notes on your guitar and then just sort of turn the gain up to just so you can just hear it and then let the output volume on the left determine the rest of it like put it on i, I go by the clock system right so i'd say like two o'clock uh, but put the gain really low and then you'll get like overdrive and not as much distortion out of the pedal because uh yeah for me uh too much it's just too much distortion so if i put the gain really low uh it's sort of less like that full-on distortion mm -hmm. yeah it's it's not really a pedal i mean it's a usable sounding pedal for 80s rock and roll 80s yeah. you know hair rock and roll I, I would even go hard rock but if you're in the local blues you know blues band you know the, your local uh 
bar playing band and you want the sound that everyone has, that's really not the pedal you want. You know, if, if you're if you're going for that, uh, I mean, that 70s sounding rock and roll, it, blues, rock, um, it's not the sound. It's, you know, it's, it's more of a hard rock. Yeah, and I guess my two bit like my other setup that I normally play with live. I've got the the Boss Yellow. I think it's called Overdrive. SD one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that one. I mean that that's something that uh, someone could try as well. Like it's it's got less distortion than the uh, fifty one fifty does, but that's the oh, one. Oh yeah, that, much, much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's the one I use on my setup. I have like a chorus that and a phaser, uh, the phase ninety, the uh, orange pedal and a wah pedal and then an echoplex at the end of the line into the amp. So yeah, that's just something the, the guy was uh, mentioning, whoever that was, uh, if he could try uh, that boss uh, yellow one. Yeah. Scott Nickerson has a great question. He says, question being a beginner, what do you recommend for learning to dial in tone? Uh, the internet is, am is an amazing uh, technique. Uh, if you go on YouTube and you type in your favorite guitar players, there's always going to be some sort of lesson, someone giving a lesson on whoever's tone. Uh, yep. It's just, it's, it's really, uh, it's really cool. If you want to learn about tone and if you want to uh, hear something before you buy it, definitely use the internet. It's it's something I wish I had growing up. I would have saved a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, and also depending on what amp you have, usually if you have, uh, I mean, any amp, you could really just go online and search like settings, blah, blah, blah amp settings, <laughs> and there'll be forums about it. You know. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Sorry, the the guy that asked that question, Dave, what tone was he going for? Did he just say wanted? He just wanted to know, being a beginner, uh, what's the best way about going about looking into getting good tone? Yeah, yeah. You know, basically also, you know, your ears are are the most important part of your body. Uh, if you can hear it, if, you know, whatever sounds good to your ears is what's good. Um, just listen to, listen to your favorite guitar players and try to emulate their tones. You don't necessarily have to keep it, but it also helps your ear. It, it helps train your ear to know what you like. Yeah. You know? Because in, in the meantime, as you're trying to find that sound, you might go, hey, man, you know what? When I had a certain dial, a different direction, uh, it, it sounded better to me. And that's kind of what it's all about to get your own sound, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I just, uh, yeah, there's all kinds, even not just like fans of bands and, and saying, okay, here's the tone. You, this is what you do to need to do to get that tone. Sometimes the actual artist <laughs> will will uh, sit down there. I mean, one of my favorite guitar players is Robin Trower from the early 70s. He was considered the white Jimi Hendrix at the time, man. And you want to know something? He was he was uh, out before Hendrix. Hendrix yeah. actually listened to him and all that stuff you hear Hendrix playing. Yeah. It's him doing Robin Trower. Yeah. You know, it's, and, it's uh, just that. Yeah. It, Hendrix got noted and no, and noticed for it. So yeah, so that that was a sound I was go, always going for with a phaser, and all the Van Halen guys out here. Yeah, Van Halen used to play like "Day of the Eagle" is a song off of uh, a 1974. There's a Robin Trower album called "Bridge of Size," and the song "Bridge of Size." The intro to that song is basically "Fools" off of "Who and the Children First. So yes. like, there's lots of songs out there in early Van Halen that a lot of early bands in the 70s that's you know they got a lot of stuff from those bands and uh mm -hmm. yeah the robin trower sound was a sound i always played with with blues bands that i played with yeah. um bit of distortion chorus and uh the phaser in there and man you're there <laughs> you're halfway yeah. there just getting those pedals right so uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah something good to check out and uh, yeah i just uh, looked at it the other day robin trower sat down like six minutes and going someone asked him how did you get the the sound and the, he gave him the whole path from his fender strat into his marshall and uh yeah, good stuff. So Cheeto Tequito asks one more question. He says, my sound is like Joe Satriani, if anything. I just love the EVH PV guitars, so I figured I'd go with the pedal. It didn't work. Distortion pedal recommendations with good sustain. 
there are a lot of them out there. I would try uh, the the uh, Friedman B E uh, O D is is my favorite. Uh, I would try the um, uh, the Bogner uh, uh, Ecstasy pedal, the red or the blue, which is kind of expensive, but it's really good. It has a lot of uh, it has a lot of EQ on it. Uh, the Bogner makes another one called, uh, oh, what's that? What's the name of that pedal? It's a, it, it's a ZZ Top song too. I can't remember the name of the pedal. <laughs> Legs. <laughs> no, no, it's, a, it's it, LaGrange. <laughs> LaGrange. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. I think it's called yeah. the LaGrange. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Try that pedal too. There's a bunch of them. Uh, a lot of companies nowadays. The uh, the pinnacle made by um, um, the whole company makes the pinnacle. Oh, pinnacle overdrive. Uh, you guys, either any of you guys? No, uh, I don't know that no. one. What, what's the one that Paul Gilbert uses from TC Electronic? The Mojo Mojo. Yeah, what about that one? That, that's not heavy gain. That's that's, that's just that a little pedal, bit of like that pedal is great for uh, for an amplifier that has that has some gain going into it, and that's just a boost. Gotcha. Okay. It sounds good though. Uh, hang on one second. What was I just saying? Pinnacle. Yeah. And, and Dave, just the general price range of all these pedals. Are we looking at two hundred dollars? Two hundred dollars. Yeah. That's what most of these overdrive pedals are going to be. And just anybody out there in the chat that's new to playing guitar. Wampler. Wampler makes the pinnacle pedal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just anybody new in the chat, if you're new, don't be afraid to go to a guitar shop. Go into, like, the amp room that you can shut the door. And with the right sales guy, they're just going to bring in every pedal for you. They're usually pretty... Uh, like uh, I guess user friendly or customer friendly, they'll just line them up for you. Um, at least my guitar guitar shop here, they're super friendly, and uh, you know that's what that's what that room's there for is for guys to try out stuff. I know a lot of guys sort of walk by that room, look in, oh, I'd like to go try some stuff, and they walk away. Well, hey man, step up, get in there, and don't mm -hmm. be afraid. Uh, it doesn't matter if you play an A chord and an E chord; it doesn't matter. You're just trying to figure out the sound that you like. So. Yeah. Uh, don't don't be embarrassed because you're new. Uh, that part of this is to you know have the guts to try stuff, right? So don't just exactly don't, yeah. exactly. Yeah, uh, Chiquito says, "How about the Duncan Palladium pedal with EQ on it?" I got it. I'll be honest, I haven't tried that pedal, um, but try it. it. It may be something that you're looking for, and you know, and listen, any place you go, they're going to give you a 30 day return policy. Right. If you're if you're afraid to play in a store in front of people, buy whatever pedals you want, play them at home. You have 30 days. The ones you don't like, return. They can't say anything to you. Yep. You know, if you have the dough to do that. If you don't have the dough, well, then you know, you buy one at a time. I, you know, I would just suggest if you're going to buy more than one, don't get more than two at a time because after a while, <laughs> everything sounds starts to sound the same. But you know, just you'll figure it out. It, it it takes a little bit of time, and it and the process is actually a lot of fun. So half the, half the fun is is figuring out what you do like. So I would check it all out. Yeah, and uh, and also anybody out there, when you go into that room to try stuff out, you can also ask for a, a set of headphones. If you don't want people hearing you, if you're a beginner and, and you're embarrassed, get a set of headphones, and you'll just uh, you're you're the only one basically hearing it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and the other, there's there's one more pedal, the uh, the the um, Friedman Dirty Shirley pedal. Also, oh, it has yeah. le it has a little bit less gain than the B E O D, but the tone on that pedal is is killing. It is killing it. It sounds like one of the best blues breaker <laughs> amps you've ever heard. So, if if it's not heavy gain that you like, but you want a great sounding Marshall get that dirty shirley pedal so dave a lot of guys that dirty shirley i've only heard it a couple times more recently but a lot of people are saying just sort of straight up on the level if you want a fair warning sound that's a pedal to sort yeah. of try out. yeah 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 
Mm-hmm. And that's made by Friedman? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that one yet. <laughs> I had the amp for a while, and I loved it. The only thing, it was it's just too heavy to carry. So I, I sold it. But the it, the amp sound was amazing. The pedal, the pedal, I've heard clips of the pedal, and it's also just amazing. There you go. And going back to Scott Nickerson's question about dialing in tone, um, put like if, if you listen to an album and you like the guitar tone, use it as like a reference. You know what I mean? Wow. Like have your amp on, play, and, wow. and you can kind of gauge, you know, okay, where's the, the treble, the mid-range, the, you know, I know it's coming from an amp or whatever, and then you got, you know, if you have little speakers or whatever, but you can kind of gauge, like use it as a reference. I do it while mixing. You know, yeah. you're mixing a song or something, you use a reference track or tracks so, you know, because like Dave, what Dave was saying before, your ears kind of get used to something after a while and everything can kind of sound the same. So you <laughs> keep going back like, oh, this 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 guitar needs more treble. This guitar needs more treble. Next thing you know, the mix falls apart. So you keep going back to a mix that you know what sounds, know something that sounds like. Yeah. So you, you don't go crazy and you don't ruin mixes. So it's Well, that's thing. that's a that's a big thing. You know, thing, something that uh, something about tone is if it sounds good. Like if say you're playing your guitar in your in your living room at low volume and you think it's the best best sound you've ever heard in your life. The next thing is you get into a band situation or you're trying to record that sound and you're like, that it can't be the same sound. It's not it's not fitting in the mix not right. Through. Yeah. It's totally different. Once you're playing with a band, you wanna you wanna gel with the band. So you might want a little less bass or a little less treble or a little less something so that the you can hear the other instruments just as well and it becomes a rounded sound. So what you might think sounds good may not sound good, and what you think what you may think doesn't sound great is one of the best sounds you can hear in a band. Because I tell you what, listen to ACDC. Any ACDC song in the world. If you were to listen to Angus Young's tone without the band, you would think that it was really dry, really clean, and I mean, it it has no body to it. But you listen to it in the song "Back in Black," and it's it's huge. It's it's the most amazing sound you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. So it, you just have to work with it. Not, not what you, you know, it's not always going to work out to your ears, but you know, it's. Yeah. It's a different thing when you get just the guitar and then in the band, because I know this is my personal uh, experience too. I know a lot of metal players um, when they're playing by themselves, you know, they like that scooped. Oh, no mids. Scoop sound, no mids, you know. And then once you're playing with a band, that guitar doesn't cut through at all. It sounds like a gnat. <laughs> it's like. Uh. Yes. A digital, like the yeah, it's 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 it's, it's terrible. But I, I was guilty of that too when I was younger. You know, what I mean, you start playing in a band, I'm like man, I can't hear my guitar. Everyone's like, dude, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And you turn up, and it's just that digital treble, just you know, <laughs> blowing your ears out. You just throw a little I bit think of. Everyone, I think just, we've all we've all made that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And also, anybody in the chat, if you're new. Uh, what Dave said, the the actual whole album, Back in Black, that's a really good reference point. I'd say to you, it's a good record to just learn beginning to end. It's all there. It's one of the biggest selling records ever. Uh, the riffs are, uh, they're, they're learnable, right? There's nothing super yeah. complicated. Yeah, they're, they're all pretty easy to learn, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, so, and yeah. it's it's like it's like rock and roll 101. It really, yeah, is. It really is. Yeah don't, yeah, don't try, don't try to learn the intro to Mean Street the second you pick <laughs> yeah. up the guitar because it, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> don't start where I did. I'm learning. I've been playing Eruption for thirty years. <laughs> That's where I started. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, what Jay was saying about uh, you know sitting in a room listening to a record. I mean, I did it. Guys. Back to the Robin Trower thing. That intro to uh, Ridge of Size. He's just hammering at the on at the second fret. The intro to the song and same for me i was just until i heard i was had my phaser on and i was am i gonna be at like one o'clock am i gonna be at five o'clock with the phaser like the whole thing uh just just being able to uh listen to the record and play at the same time and adjust your pedals till you get the sound you want uh well, i was this i was the same thing yeah yeah and i think it help it'll help you develop your ear too oh yeah because you're listening 
It's not just playing and it's like, yeah, I think this sounds cool. You're hearing somebody else's tone, somebody else's sound. And you're like, okay, well, and then next thing you know, your ear, you know, you start listening more and your ears develop that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that this is more information that we've given <laughs> in the last 17 shows. <laughs> <laughs> Not 18, but 17, yes. <laughs> and we did it all in an hour. You betcha. <laughs> Amazing. Was there any other questions in there, guys, from the chat? I'm reading. There's uh, just people oh, talking okay. about it now. No more questions. Well, Cheeto Taquito says, I've noticed that 10 sound better on his on my Wolfgangs than the recommended nine, so I finally switched and have noticed better playing ability. That's perfect. Whatever whatever works for you and what feels good for you is what you should use. Yeah, exactly. It, it's back to anybody out there. They're, the personal preference <laughs> stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, like even going further, like Jay Hannon himself, right? Like playing nickel uh, frets for his basically probably his whole life, and all of a sudden he tries stainless, and his whole world has changed. <laughs> so, so don't think it doesn't happen to guys who have been playing for twenty or thirty years. Uh, there's changes uh, with guitars, uh, like I don't know, six months every year. There's new things uh, coming out all the time, right? So uh, it's all uh, trial and error. And uh, so, yeah, you guys are doing the right thing. Uh, figure it out what you like. Uh, well, yeah, awesome. um, what you just said about the wolf, you know, talking about the wolf gangs. Yeah. Normally, I've always used, um, what are the, what's the name of it again? The uh, super light top regular bottom. It's like mixing nines and tens. Yeah. You know what I mean? But on the wolf gangs, when I first got them, that's what I was trying. And then... I put nines on, nine to forty-two, and I was like, "Holy crap, this feels yeah. better." <laughs> well, you know yeah, I mean? the, the, I, I've gone backwards too. I've gone both ways with with strings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I was younger, I played everything. I played had nines on it, and then I went to tens on on Fender and and Gibson stuff, and stayed on. I always stayed on nines on everything Floyd Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on my fenders, I went to 11s, and I played on 11s for a good year. And then I got hand problems with 11s, and I went back down to 10s. And mm -hmm. now I'm playing 9s again on everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, you know, Jimi Hendrix, the way that Jimi Hendrix got all those bends is because he was playing 9s, mm -hmm. you know, and listen to his tone. Anyone who says Jimi Hendrix had bad tone, oh. to get their ears checked. And he played yeah. on 9s. So did Clapton. Clapton, you know, yeah, Clapton plays tens now, but back in the late '60s and and '70s, he was playing nines. They were all playing on nine gauge strings. So, you know, they all had great tone. So you can get great tone playing nines. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, the only the only thing I will say is uh. On my seven strings, the low B, those are the ones I use, you know, uh, 9, 11, 16, 26, 36, 46. The 56 is the low B because a 52 is what comes on those things. It's a nines with a 52. Right. And I'm telling you something. I mean, if you're playing metal on those things and you have a 52 as the low B, that thing's flopping on you. Boom. Well, you know. I, I, you know I know that Vi uses a 52 on his. Yes. And yep. you're not going to say that his low B string is floppy. No, no, no. <laughs> but I, I'm more of an aggressive player, though. Like when I'm playing metal, it's full you know, on. when I'm chugging and stuff and, and, you know, palm muting and ringing out, I, I play harder than normal, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I had to. I even tried a, 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 a 54. And I was like, eh, I still need that. that uh... So 56 worked for, worked for it. So cool. Whatever, you know? So did you guys get Johnny's uh, text? Um, I didn't. He's, he's gone. Oh. <laughs> he's gone. So we can either say goodbye at any time, or he said he'd be back in a half hour, and that was about 10 minutes ago. And oh, okay. quite frankly, I would love to stay on here, but I, I, I can't be on all night. Can't I can't either. I have to uh, go put Ellie to sleep. Oh, yeah. In a minute. Sorry, sorry, Jay. I just got one question I need from you. So when you yeah. buy 
uh, a set of the seven. I don't have a singer, seven string guitar, right? So I, I have, mm -hmm. sort of have no idea. <laughs> so uh, you're saying that you buy the set and then the low B, you have to go like buy an individual string from your guitar shop or somewhere. Yeah, when I, when I order them, um, they they make certain you know, every company now, I think, makes seven string sets, but they usually only make like one or two different different sizes. Okay. Um, so usually what I'll do is I'll get a six string set and a single string. Okay. Because they don't make the the size, the, uh, the pack. That's how I had to do it when I had seven strings. You, they didn't make seven string sets yet. So you had to, or you had to buy a set, the set of six strings that you liked and then get a 52 or a 53. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So when the seven strings were first coming out, <laughs> you couldn't buy a set of Yeah, no companies made them. Yep. That's amazing. But yet you buy a guitar that is a seven string guitar. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but when you went to a music store, <laughs> I swallowed too soon to get to get what I was trying to say out. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um yeah, but when you we all know this, when you when you went to a music store, um, you know, they have all the sets lined up, you know, either hanging or whatever. Uh, but then they have the they have the boxes with the individual strings in there. I mean, right. I don't know if they still do that, but that's what I remember. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's never a problem. <laughs> Fender Guru says he loves this show. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's only because of people like you, Fender Guru. That the Fender show. Guru, uh, he always says great things, and I think he's in New Zealand. <clears throat> so that's uh, – I don't know if that's the only person we've ever had from New Zealand. <laughs> so well, I want to know what, what got unboxed. Uh, Scott Nickerson. Oh yeah. Well, Steve sent. I already took them out of the box, but Steve sent me some four of these, basically, rum <laughs> yeah. glasses. So tiki mugs, ceramic tiki mugs. Yep. So okay. on Friday night's late show, yeah, I'll be using one of these. Wow, we'll have those to, are uh, so cool. I gotta. I'm gonna have to find those for my coffee. Well, Dave, you're talking to the right guy. I can send you a set. Well. Uh, I don't want you to have to send me a set because then it makes it makes Jay's gift look less special. So no thank you. <laughs> Why? Why? Nah, I'm not like that. No thank well, you. I wouldn't get upset if, if that. I wouldn't get upset if everybody had the same stuff. Well, I tell you what. If you decide you want to send me those glasses, let me know if there's anything I can send you. Oh, man. Just, not uh, not no. a guitar, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Just those uh, Dave Nesdell uh, at AOL.com picks. That'd you want cool. you you want those? I'll send you a whole. I'd, I'd love I'd love a Dave Nesdell pick. Just How about I send you a whole bag of like 144 of them? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's beyond nice of you. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, a big update from uh, David Allen Wright. So stuff is getting uh, shipped from uh, uh, Europe, uh, England. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jim Francis sent me a. Of a, uh, a picture, and I was like, and I, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not getting that because Steve Anderson's yeah. getting mine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jay also got a set of coasters, and uh, Jay, I sent him the first uh, issue oh, of yeah. the Inside Magazine. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's the first issue from our friend uh, Jeff Hausman. Uh, who runs the Van Halen News Desk and the Van Halen Store, where you get all your merchandise from. And uh, so that's the uh, – he had 16 issues of that magazine, and that was the first one. So I know Jay's a big uh, – magazine, getting to be a bit of a magazine buff, so I said, you know what? He's got to have a, the first issue. So that's what did I sent him that one. Did you tell him – did you call Jeff to, to order it and tell him who, uh, you were going to send it to me? No, uh, Jay, I have quite a collection of Van Halen stuff, and I have – quite a few things in duplicate or triplicate <laughs> oh yeah well, this yeah. is from your own collection yes sir oh steve that's that, that means even more man thank you oh no, no it's it's all good man uh you i know i've never... acted first yeah right <laughs> 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 no uh no it's amazing it's a really amazing for me guys because I, I know i haven't met any you guys in person but uh yeah it's been amazing this whole cyber world and meeting uh seeing the show first of all a year and a half ago and now being able to be on it, it's a real honor. And uh, <clears throat> say it a million times, thanks to Dave. And you, everybody can look at his guitars on the back wall. And I did my first build. Would have never happened without uh, these guys' uh, influence. 
Um, and uh, now, yeah, I'm just going to be a guitar building guy. So I'm building my own uh, uh, sort of guitar that I can play live that's sort of not obviously any related with striping, but uh, the influence is there. Kramer Pacer body, uh, uh, it'll be a Charvel maple neck, but uh, the EVH uh, profile, but because uh, I want, uh, that's just the best feeling guitar I've ever had. So <laughs> uh, yeah. All good. I'm ex super excited to be a, in this building world now. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, I got to split. I have one thing to say. Energize. Oh, something's going to disappear. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Cheeto Chiquito asks one more question. He says, what's the best way to route your pedals or route your pedals? That, you know what? That's something that we're going to have to discuss. I think Johnny is going to be home tomorrow night. So we may actually do a show tomorrow and not Tuesday. Or if we do one on Tuesday, it's either going to be tomorrow night or Tuesday. I don't think it's going to be both nights. But um, uh, what was I saying? We could talk about it then. It's just it's 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 not an easy question to answer right away, you know, real quick. So come back, come back tomorrow night or Tuesday night. If you click the bell underneath this video. Uh, <laughs> When Johnny goes online and when we do this, you'll get a notification. So you'll be able to know when we're on. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer that question. We'll, we'll all be happy to help answer that question. But it's just, it'll be, that's another half hour conversation just on that question. <laughs> all right, but I got to jump out. I'm going to leave you guys okay. to end it or whatever. Johnny said. Okay. No, we're out. We're I'll out. Back in a minute. So, all right, yeah. I got to go. Good night, yeah, everybody. He's going to come back to an empty show. Oh, man. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, Jake. All right, Steve. So I okay. think I'm going to go, too. I think we should all go. And all you people, don't wait for Johnny Bean. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be about 10 minutes before he gets back. So thanks for joining us. Have a great night. And uh, thanks for all the cool questions tonight. Yeah. And Steve, thank you for the beautiful gift. This is oh, awesome. yeah, man. If I ever see something Star Trek that I can send to you, it's it's coming your way. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All yeah. right, guys. Have a great Sunday night. Yep. We'll see you either tomorrow night or Tuesday night, depending on what Johnny wants to do, one or the other. And uh, we'll talk more about this junk. <laughs> see ya. Okay. Adios. Bye. <laughs>
Hey, I guess everybody left. Sorry, my uh, my car pat my my car my car battery died, and so I have to go get a new one. It's been a crazy night. All right, see you guys later. Johnnybean.com. Good night.